So the first load of horses is here and there's supposed to be 19 on this trailer. really suffering. There's a lot of critical horses in this load from what we're seeing, but he's the worst. Um, he cannot use his his leg here. It looks like he is a standard bred, um, so we should be able to find out his history. Um, oh, poor guy. We're going to shave down his brand so Kimberly can get a picture of it and we can see who he is and where he came from. All right, I got it. He's got a pretty strong pain response. I just want to see if he can flex his elbow. So this joint is fused. I can bend a little bit this way, but I can't extend this part of the foot out. And this would have taken months and months. There's a huge bony callus right here that's keeping this joint from functioning. This is horse sustained some kind of severe trauma and then the shoulder is completely dropped and you can see a ton of atrophy right here. Um, the radial nerve runs right here in his armpit along with the brachial plexus and when we have severe injury to that radial nerve you have the shoulder drop and you have no um, use of the forelimb and then it's especially hard in horses because they bear 60 percent of their weight in their front legs so he's having to try to compensate and hold 60 percent of his weight on this right front leg um, and he's shown a pretty strong pain response on palpation of the left shoulder he's got a digital pulse in this right foot a really strong pulse. This horse has an indication of active founder in this support limb, which is likely secondary to, normally when we see laminitis, it's a metabolic process, but we can have it um, secondary to having to bear more weight than is necessary and it's very painful. Um, this horse also hasn't had farrier care for, the, his heel bulb should end right here. So this is severe neglect following a a traumatic injury. And he's been through one auction already and would have been headed on to another one. It's so sad. Um, so they're selling horses at auctions like this in the United States and nobody, nobody cares. Other, I mean, we care obviously, but like nobody's, nobody's at these auctions. Like some, some vet pulled blood on him at the auction being he like. He has a certificate, he has a CVI. Yeah, he has a health certificate. He's got all these things that, you know, for, for bringing it. It's just really frustrating. It's really frustrating. But we're thankful we were able to intercept him from the auction and this is why your donations are so important. This load of horses cost nearly $10,000 just to purchase them. And it's, it's crucial that we are able to to save horses like this. Like he's super sweet. He's, he's like at first he didn't want to be caught. He didn't want anything. And now he's just like, he's not sedated. He's just like loving the chance to be loved. Yes, I know. That horse's heart rate was 68, which indicates pretty severe pain. So I'm gonna give some IV pain medication. This horse's heart rate is 68 right now. He did just get off a trailer, but he's being very calm. Um, 
upper end of normal is in the upper 30s for horses. So an elevated heart rate is one of our best indicators of pain. So this horse is very painful and I'm gonna get him some intravenous pain medication that's gonna take him really quickly. The last act of kindness will be our only option for him. Um, and it's, it's something that is a gift when, when it's horses like this, like they are suffering so much and we can relieve that suffering from them. And without us, he would have he could gone on to slaughter. And there are some folks that are like, well, horses should be slaughtered. Like when I was in Washington DC last time, they're like, I am pro slaughter, but I'm against abuse. This is out of the slaughter pipeline. This horse is, is suffering. Abuse and the slaughter pipeline go hand in hand. How old do we think he is? What a gorgeous horse. Oh, he's beautiful. Uh, I would age him between five and seven. He's so young. I know. So he's five or seven years old. Um, and he does have a brand, so we can verify that. But he's so uh, the other trailer is here. Um, we're going to have to give him the last act of kindness. There's nothing we can do, and his heart rate is uh, showing that he's in a lot of pain. Um, I'm probably going to put him in a stall just for a second uh, while the next trailer unloads, but he is a high priority for us for the last act of kindness to, because he is, he's, his pain levels are very high. We are going to give him the last act of kindness. Uh, he's had lots of pain medicine on board. He's also sedated. He's so painful that we don't want to do x-rays while he's alive. So uh, his x-rays will be taken uh, after he is gone just to document his damage um, and this t just torture he's gone through. Sorry, buddy. On physical exam, we couldn't move his left foreleg normally, especially down at the bottom. And when he was walking, he was knuckling over and kind of falling on the front. And so when we look at this radiograph, we see evidence that the bones aren't aligned properly to make a bony column. So this bone is supposed to be in a different orientation with this one. And same thing here, this bone and this bone are supposed to be oriented differently and I wasn't able to physically straight, straighten it out. So one thing that can happen right here is we can have bone form, we can have a bony callus form, and we have arthrodesis where those two bones can't move in association with each other, and that actually provides stability and increased comfort. In cases like this poor horse, we don't have a normal synovial structure right there, but we have bone kind of grinding on bone. And so every time this horse stepped down, he couldn't, pull his shoulder up to align his leg appropriately because of that nerve damage. And so he just kind of dragged this, but then every time he stepped down, he was putting pressure where pressure shouldn't have gone. And he probably had really severe pain um, here and here, um, this poor guy. So far this mare has a movable mass on the right side of her trachea between her mandible and her trachea which feels abnormal. She also might've had previous chokes because she has a little bit of a lump down here in her esophagus. Um, 
flare. Okay. She has flare on her uh, ocular exam, or ophthalmic exam. Flare. She has decreased GI sounds, but they're present. They picked up with cookies. Bilateral <laughs> flare, but positive menace bilaterally. So looks like Galvani's groove reached the bottom. Which would Ooh. be 25. Yeah. Uh, well, 20 is the, at the very bottom. And then 25 is halfway back down. Hi. You're very sweet. She's very cute. You're a very good girl. She's very good. Um, we should take dental wraps on her. Okay. Yeah, come She seems off. She's a little vision impaired, too. This mare, I need to listen to her. She I didn't is hear anything, but. she is missing teeth. We need to look more closely at her teeth to assess. We are aging her in her mid to late twenties. Um, she also has active anterior uveitis with flare going on in both eyes, and we need to do more um, assessment of her proprioception in her hind legs. Sweet girl. Oh my goodness. She has a severe heart murmur. Does anybody want to hear this? I do. It's, it's, I would grade this a five to six out of six. So instead of lub dub, you have lub. Ooh. You hear it? So on the right, her heart just sounded really muffled. Here, let me. Um, I'm not a cardiologist, but her, she has a pretty severe heart murmur. We grade heart murmurs from one to six, and I would grade hers at a five to six. You can, um, you can almost feel the murmur and you can hear it with every heartbeat. Um, we also assess point of maximum intensity for heart murmurs. So there are three heart valves on the left and hers is a PMI over the mitral valve. So what often happens with age is that mitral valve um, gets weaker and instead of closing crisply, it kind of flops and then we have blood flow back into the heart. She likely has an enlarged cardiac silhouette. So she is, I can't say with this information whether or not she's in heart failure, but she is probably headed for heart failure. So it's a pretty severe murmur. Yeah, she's got, I don't know if you guys can see. So she doesn't have missing teeth, but on both top sides, all of her teeth are worn to the level of the gums, so she likely hasn't been able to reduce the particle sizes she's chewing. Um, sometimes when we have missing teeth or we have a hook or a wave, we can kind of correct that, but even though horses have continuously growing teeth at some point in their lives, the rate of wear doesn't keep up with the rate of growth, and then we can have severe weight loss like we see in this. this poor lady. So this... Poor mare has a lot of problems that we see pretty often um, in these groups of bio horses. She's probably upwards of 25 years old. She's um, missing a functional occlusal surface on both sides of her mouth, so she really doesn't have the ability to chew her food. Um, she has a grade five to six heart murmur that's very severe, and you can actually palpate. She's got engorged vessels running along her chest wall, so she likely is headed towards heart failure. Um, and she also has active evidence of an inflammation in both of her eyes that's reducing her vision. So um, anterior uveitis is the most likely cause, but that can cause pain as pressure changes in both of your eyes. So unfortunately for her, um, some of these things we can manage, but heart disease specifically, especially at this stage, we don't have any treatment options for, and we don't want her to suffer a cardiac event and pass. So we're probably gonna recommend the last act of kindness for this mare. This sweet girl, we were thinking she was going to be okay, but then she has a, a very significant heart murmur along with some other medical conditions. So we are going to be giving her the last act of kindness. And again, it's important to think about where would these horses be without us? They would be taken to an auction tonight. They'd be ran through the auction and most likely be shipped to slaughter. Um, it's intercepting them and giving them that, that 
just that, that somebody cared in the end rather than just turning a blind eye to them. It's, uh, it's rescue work is really hard work, but it is, it changes the world for them, even if it's for a short time. Yeah, he's toes out and needs to trim, but. Not the best confirmation, but. I need one more, too. He doesn't seem super. There's one inside of the barn. You just have gray on your face. I don't think those are actually stars or anything. You're a good boy. Kind of sweaty feeling. I bet that trailer ride was nerve wracking. So far, his teeth are just kind of in rough shape. His molars and premolars are worn to the gum line. Um, but so far, I've just started my exam. Nothing besides the teeth just yet. And so he's about a two out of nine. So he needs some groceries, but his teeth would definitely be a component of that. If he has no molars, like Dr. Lydia said on the other horse to actually get the food to the right particle size for him to absorb it. That could be the reason why he looks so poor, but we'll have to do a more extensive dental eval with the speculum on and stuff like that. But. This car, they look kind of big, but they also match. Yeah, so yeah. bilaterally they're yeah. both kind of clunky. He just kind of has knobby knees. Yeah. He kind of has like the tight lip and wrinkled eye, like he might be uncomfortable somewhere. Yeah. You could definitely take a radiograph of this elbow. You want to do ra rads on which This which one? left elbow. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could probably take both just to compare them. Yeah. But, but you can feel it if you want to in a second. How are you for me to listen to you, big guy? Did you find something fun? Yeah, it's like, this is like bony right there. Oh. But it's not the same on that side. Did you have a previous injury? Maybe. Yeah, if you look, this leg just feels thicker up under here. Aside from his teeth and this weird swelling in his like left armpit and that little, so we probably want to take a radiograph of that too. So maybe just so do fat lock or that whole leg. Yeah. Yeah. And see. But other than that, and his teeth. Elbow down on the left and so. at least elbows on the right. Okay. So just further diagnostics then? Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Unless something major becomes evident on his moving. So we just got done looking at that really pretty bay gelding. Um, aside from his teeth, he had some weird swelling in his left armpit kind of close to his olecranon or his elbow. So we want to take radiographs and we're probably going to do that whole limb because he's got some bony changes down in, near his fetlock. Um, but he did, when we were palpating around his sternum, he had some dried manure caked on there, which could be evidence that he's been laying down a lot. Um, so we're going to definitely want to check out and make sure his, all of his joints and stuff palpate normal and look normal in radiographs. Um, other than that, his teeth and further diagnostics on that, he seems to be pretty stable. I don't feel any lymph node enlargement. Yeah. Do you want me yeah. to readjust her and see if that's just how she is? Sure. Was that, was that just how you were standing? Okay, it's still kind of weird. Yeah. So far, she's a really poor body condition score, even though her belly seems kind of round. She's got really prominent bony features and her uh, rectum and vulva are pretty sunken in. Uh, but so far, she wasn't palpating painful to the back and she didn't have enlarged lymph nodes. Um, I don't, I haven't done the... I thought I looked super sunken. Yeah. I think she's visual over here. Yeah. Open your eyes so I can check it. She's like, I'm just going to keep drinking. Yeah, menace negative on that side. 
Your poor little eye. You got a lot of scar in and your micro -optomic. I'm sorry, sweetie. But you're cute. You're cute, cute, cute. You're gonna let me listen to you? I think you will. You seem like a real good girl. Someone spent a lot of time on you. I would grade this probably a two. It is much more subtle, but that heart is so muffled. Yeah. Her udder doesn't seem developed and she doesn't, but without doing a rectal exam. Yeah. She's also the one that um, got cast off the trailer. Why don't we run a CBC chem on her? Sure. Um, Hold on. Good. Go, 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 go. And put her down for, preg I mean, check. we could do a preg check. Do you think that's the lens? Guy? Yeah. That has a scar? I would yeah. think, because it's deep. Yep. Okay. And she's got microphthalmia. So this sweet little mare is the one that fell off the trailer and immediately got cast. But her personality is such that she's just kind of like, whatever, do whatever. She's really calm and sweet. Um, her teeth aged her dentally at 25. Um, there was a question about maybe her being pregnant. We don't see any overt evidence of it, but we'll preg check her tomorrow. We're going to pull some blood work to check her CBC chem. Um, just because she has a really slight heart murmur and her body condition. So we just want to check and see if her internals organ function are appropriate for her age. Um, but otherwise than that, she looks pretty good. She does have this lens scar and micro on this left side, but she's really well adjusted to being blind on this side, but she is visual on the right. So we're going to put her aside for further evaluations tomorrow. Sorry we have to poke you so many times. Oh, you're vain. Banamine? It's a pain medication to help with her left hind pain. There, that should help you, baby girl, a little bit. That'll help you, little lady. She's also a club footy on that left hind a little bit. He gets all the things. So we, did, we have had a couple microchip spots get infected in the past um, so since that happened we have decided to shave down wherever we're going to put the microchip and also get some alcohol on there to help avoid getting an infection at the microchip site just a little bit better for the animals and it helps us save time and resources so we don't have to go back and treat an infected microchip spot ready good job kid Um, this horse is an older gelding. He um, has a wound on his right hind leg that feels warm. He's got a puncture wound. It looks like somebody clipped it. Um, I treated it with just a topical antimicrobial and then he had systemic pain and anti-inflammatory medications and systemic antibiotics. Um, he needs a sedated dental assessment plus a minus dental work and he also needs radiographs. He's got looks like a pretty severe scarring over the right carpus and in both hind legs. Um, we are going to take radiographs of this right carpus. Um, this whole joint is warm and swollen. And you can see he's got kind of pitting edema down here, but this is my biggest concern. This um, area right here feels like it could be a carpal fracture. It's very hard. Um, and he doesn't use this leg normally. I think this horse is kind of a case of he doesn't really have a good leg to stand on. He doesn't have an obvious lameness. And you can see how he's standing right now. This is a good example of how abnormal those hind legs are. He's kind of standing like this, toed in and hocks out. That's not a normal presentation for the equine hind legs. So, um, so we're going to radiograph this carpus. This one actually doesn't look normal either. Um, and then the right hind is our second area of main concern. And then we're going to shoot cranial toccata with that same view. Yikes. I didn't get your fingers in the
the primary beam, but I can see your fingers through your glove. <clears throat> so this is why radiographs are really important because we could look at this and be like, there's no way that we still have three functional joint spaces, but you can see this is the carpus. Um, we have proximal, middle, and distal carpal joints, and they're all still functional joints, but the one, then when you look at the other side, um, we have really severe arthritis and osteophytes and kind of some bridging, and then actually the big main part of that bump is all soft tissue. So we're really only able to evaluate bones on an x-ray <clears throat> and kind of make assessments about soft tissue structures. And so we can see this big enlargement right here. This is probably the um, set of synovial structures surrounding the carpal joint. Oh, there's almost no bony pathology. Okay, let's go for the hop. Okay, as soon as you hear the beep. Actually, that's not always true with this one, depending on the setting. So this is all soft tissue. Um, there's a ton of atrophy right up here. I bet this is a pelvic injury. Yeah, it hurts. I don't want to push up too much on them. So the stifle looks pretty normal. We just finished taking some radiographs on this sweet older gelding, and sometimes. Uh, fractures and bony changes are worst case scenario, but actually, if you ask any orthopedist, um, sometimes soft tissue is actually worst case scenario. So in this horse's case, I don't know if you can see, he's got atrophy on both pelvic limbs, but on the right side, he has really severe atrophy um, in front of his pelvis that indicates that the injury to the right hind leg is actually higher up. So we took images of the stifle on the other side that was normal. <coughs> He has a little bit of age consistent arthritis, but he's got pretty catastrophic winging and paddling of both of his hind legs that indicate he has a more severe injury higher up. And we can't image soft tissue structures well on an x-ray. We can only make assessments about them based on bony changes. And in this horse, he has evidence of um, complete, pretty catastrophic soft tissue tearing in those hind legs. Um, muscle atrophy gives us an indication of how long ago that happened. So. This horse is in a very poor body condition, but he has a lot of evidence that this has been going on for a long time. Um, he has signs that he's been laying down a lot to try to compensate for pain. So in this case, I don't think there's anything that we can do medically to treat this pelvic injury. His heart rate is also elevated, which is an indication of pain. It did come down with the administration of pain medications, but his long-term prognosis for return to comfort is not good. In some case, in very rare cases, sometimes horses with a hind shoe can lay down and actually hit their front leg so they can get a very similar looking mm -hmm. appearance, but this horse isn't shod in the hind end. Most commonly these are seen in heavy animals, like large breed dogs can get them too, and it comes from extended periods of lying down where you have pressure over a bony prominence without adequate bedding. So if okay. this horse was in a heavily bedded stall, he wouldn't have gotten this, but you can feel it's kind of fluctuant and fluid filled and he's got hair loss. So that's like, a long time this horse has been lying down. And he has some fluid build up also on this right elbow. mare you can see has some really severely overgrown feet i'm most concerned about this left front because when she's walking she's rocking her toe up off the ground but we won't know without radiographs whether or not she's actively foundering or she just has really bad foot neglect her heart rate was in the upper 50s um, but she's responded really well to banamine and she's walking okay so we'll wait and see what these radiographs tell us Let's do the other foot, please.
it's not normal to be able to feel um, a heartbeat in your horse's foot. So when we're checking for uh, whether laminitis is chronic and inactive or active, we try to check for a digital pulse. And in this mare's case, her right forelimb shows evidence of rotation on x-ray, but she doesn't have a digital pulse. And on this left front foot, she shows um, pretty severe rotation on the x-ray and she's got a pretty bounding digital pulse. So that tells us that her laminitis is active, at least on this foot. And that's probably where her elevated heart rate and pain is coming from. And we can go over here and take a look at this x-ray. So when we're checking for whether or not a horse has rotation, we're using the hoof wall. In this case, this horse's hoof kind of goes like this. So I'm using this top part right up here to, to compare. And we want to see the coffin bone be parallel to this angle right here. So when I run this down here, the coffin bone should be parallel to this. And you can see how severe the rotation is right here. Um, so this coffin bone has gone from this angle all the way down here. So this horse is pretty close to prolapsing her coffin bone out the bottom of her foot. She also has bounding digital pulses, so she's actively foundering in that foot. Um, founder or laminitis is something we hear about a lot, and it is not a curable condition. It's something that we can sometimes manage in some patients with special soft dried shoes and special medications and, and really intense farrier care. When we get to the point that rotation is happening, and especially when that bone is about to prolapse through the bottom of the foot, that's usually the point that we say our treatment options have been um, exhausted. So this mare is beautiful and very sweet, and it looks like someone has taken care of her up until this point. Um, but then the severe changes in that left front foot are to such a degree that we can't um, treat her because that rotation is so severe. So we're gonna recommend the last active kindness. She's actively in pain. So what, what do you know about this horse, Corey? So when he was coming off the trailer, they told me that um, he's kind of a lot to handle. Um, he doesn't want to be caught. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe that's all they meant. But if somebody can get his head over to me, I'll clip this lead rope. Have you been beat on a lot? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. We don't do that here. My guess on his height would probably be right around 17, 17, one, somewhere in there. Let's call him 23, I like that. I was thinking it right before you said it. I think he's taller than 18. No, he's like right at 18. 18-1. Well, actually, hold on. That only goes up to like 17-3, so he's probably right at 18. So we have the other trailer heading up right now, and we were told that they are all pretty critical. So we're going to get some horses moved around up here so we can focus on triaging those ones. We're going to pull some more blood and test it to see if we can find anything else um, to potentially diagnose him. Um, we are also going to get x-rays on his feet at a later time but we just want to make sure we are as thorough as possible. Her heart rate is 80 and she has a grade two heart murmur. Let's get her some banamine. I don't just see her going anywhere. She's so sweet. Got reduced gut sounds. No, you don't want this. This is not for you. 
No, it's very hot and swollen still. You can see from the way she's standing how um, difficult it is for her. She's trying to overcompensate on the left side of her body because her right um, leg obviously hurts her a lot. And you can see how um, poor her body condition is and how hard it is for her to support weight on this leg. Her heart rate is also 80, which is very elevated. Dr. Jean is gonna get her some pain medication. She's pretty severely dehydrated. You can see how slow her jugular refill time is. So normally I would grab IV pain medications, but in her case, her circulating volume is so low that I actually think it's safer for her to have pain medications orally. So we're gonna get those on board and then we're gonna take some radiographs of this right hind leg. I hate it. I hate it so much. How much did she get? She got two cc's, okay. which is the equivalent of a 10 milliliter dose. That snot looks like it came from someone else's nose. There's She's got scars. She's got big scars up here. Mm, banana flavor. Mm -hmm. Smells good. Ma'am, do you want to walk out here so we can take some x-rays? She's having trouble too. This horse is really unsteady. Who else is doing her other I don't have to. Ready? Good job. That's a bone. Yeah, a little bit oblique. It's a nutrient for you, man. Um, I want a DP of the hot. Okay. Is that a normal? Um... So that's abnormal either. That is probably the insertion point for the soft tissue that's sandwiched oh, that up little, here. Oh, okay, that yeah. makes sense. You want DP to pop? Um, I want to okay. shoot this yeah. direction, if that's okay. I got it. Sorry. Sorry. Can you do it should have been good. Let's see if we were oblique. He has a tiny bit, probably. Mmm. <laughs> So you can see there are, there should be <clears throat> two more joints associated with the hock and they're, they're in various states of collapse right here. So here's a joint space, here's a joint space, and we should see two more joint spaces here that are, that are non-existent. Let me look at the lateral of this hock. I might want to retake it. Let's try lateral of the hock one more time. Sorry. You're good. Oh yeah, weight bearing would be perfect. Oh, you're all right, sir. Ma'am, why do I keep calling you sir? Ready? This is where you can see the joints collapsed. And then we've got another osteophyte here. This is another insertion point for synovial structures that are running down the leg. The whole hock joint is collapsed in various states of bone resorption. And then when we palpate this leg, um, this horse is very, very painful, especially in the medial aspect. So my hand is right here, and when I'm feeling this whole side of the joint is very, very hot and swollen. Poor buddy. We just took radiographs of this sweet older mare. She clearly has a lot of pain associated with her hind end. She's very unstable. Um, she's overloading all of her weight onto her left hind to get weight off of this right hind. She's very unsteady and on palpation, we suspected it, that it was primarily soft tissue. When we took radiographs, we found that there's also a significant bony component. Um, this joint right here, the hock joint, um, should have two more functional joint spaces than this mare has. So two of her joint spaces associated with this joint have kind of crumbled and collapsed into each other. Um, and she's got a ton of heat and pain. I can feel heat coming off her leg this far away. So she's very, very painful. Um, on this leg, she's been so sweet. She's not sedated. She let us do everything that we needed to. And I'm gonna recheck her heart rate. We did give her some pain medication orally because she's very severely dehydrated. Um, and I didn't feel 
safe giving it to her intravenously. These intake days have been really tough. Um, so far we've had one um, horse out of the seven that we've looked at that didn't have something catastrophic um, wrong. So it is really difficult. We just get sometimes pictures of these horses ahead of time and we're always optimistic that we have problems that we can treat um, and animals that we can save. And it's really heartbreaking to have so many horses come in with problems that we can't solve. Ooh, she's got a ton of ulcers on her tongue. You guys see how Sorry, all of the you. redness? I know it hurts, honey. So she's got ulcers on her tongue and on her gums. Okay, I'm sorry that hurts. Oh, we're not doing it anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. We know. Look, she's worn the edge of this hoof down because she's dragging it. She's scraping the edge of this hoof off. My job uh, today is, is I'm, I am fundraising in, in while I can so we can try to get more horses in, but my primary job is once the veterinarians decide the last act of kindness is what needs to happen. Um, today I am on euthanasia duty and so I am the one uh, standing with Emily. Emily's helping me and we're the ones saying giving giving them their last bit of love on this earth and it's really hard but I'm just very thankful that we were able to rescue them from the pain and suffering that they are going through and then also that they didn't go to Mexico and um, it's just it's really hard when we're doing buyout rescue missions where we're taking what nobody else wants they don't even want to take them to another auction they'll bring them here um, it's really hard but um, I think I don't know how many horses that they've looked at yet but um, every time we we say goodbye to one horse I go back and there's another horse to say goodbye to so it's a rough rough job but um, I'm just thankful they're no longer suffering and for the ones that are still in pain and suffering that their suffering will be over soon and um, hopefully we get some that we'll be able to move into the adoption program but uh, uh, there are some people that work at really large dog and cat shelters and I've, I've met them and they, their job literally is to euthanize dogs and cats eight hours a day and I cannot imagine being resp responsible pet owners and if you have an older horse or you have a horse that has problems please take it to your veterinarian don't let it go to an auction or give it away to somebody because you're seeing what the reality is of what happens to horses when they have medical conditions and they're thrown away and there's a lot of really amazing horses that go through auctions and um, you know we're not really able to go to the the main auction that we're going to now because they kicked us out and we're still working on trying to uh, get back into that auction because um, we're able to rescue more adoptable horses but there are very hidden gems through this uh, buyout program that have gone on and lived amazing lives, but um, sadly there's just so many that are so broken and we just, we can take to heart that they're no longer suffering. This mare is about 16 years old. Um, she's got some old scars and stuff on her hooves and she's in very poor body condition. She also has what looks like a pretty recent injury to this eye. Um, you can tell how painful she is. She's got her jaw clamped and she has her eye really kind of crunched. I just gave her nine milliliters of banamine intravenously. So that's going to help with pain and inflammation. And then we're going to use fluorescein to stain this eye to see if we have a corneal ulcer. Probably we do. And then I've got some Neopoly back. That's just some basic, um, eye ointment that I'm going to put in it afterwards. Um, but first we're going to confirm and see if our cornea has an abrasion. You're a good girl. And this is sterile and designed for this purpose. We want to be really careful with what we put in an eye, especially an injured eye. You're a good girl, I know. And basically the stain is just gonna mix with tears and do its job. Yep, oh my goodness, see the pinpoint, see the dots? The string is just an eye goober, but you can see the dots. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one really big, see the one up in the front? 
It's a very big cornea ulcer, so she's got a lot of ulcerations on that cornea. And we're gonna put meds in to help her feel better. I know, you're a good girl. Good girl. Um, she is gonna need daily eye meds. So let's put her in one of these stalls so that we can more easily access her. Um, and if she's easy to catch, we can medicate her out in the field, but let's put her in a stall for right now. Mare is Horse Plus's number 100 um, for horses for the year. She has pretty severe corneal ulcers, and one of the best treatments for corneal ulcers is to use a horse's own serum to treat the eye. Um, so I'm gonna pull some more blood from her and we're gonna spin it down on our lunch break so we can use that autologous serum to treat her eye. It helps the cornea heal more quickly and it also helps provide lubrication and pain relief. So one of nature's many natural medications. Good girl. Sorry, we had to poke you a bunch of times. We're listening right now. He's been palpated. He is a boy, okay. but without testicles. Uh, what do we want to call him? Um, I haven't seen a movie yet. Okay, what BCS do we want to call him? What do you think? I'm thinking maybe, oh. Uh, well, he's kind of fluffy still. Yeah, but I can feel all the ribs. Yeah, he's lean. Two. Yeah. So this is number 101 from our buyout program. He does not have a name yet, but he will have a name by the time you see this. Um, we checked him out and he seems to be sound. He seems to be healthy. So we get, went ahead and uh, vaccinated him, microchipped him, pulled his blood for Coggins and got photos. So he is ready to go out to his pasture. There it goes. All right, good buddy. Um, we're getting Coggins on this sweet paint boy. Um, he looks, his front feet and the way he's moving, he's very back on his hind legs, which is very typical of laminitis or foundering. Um, so I'm going to get his Coggins, we're going to get his pictures, and we're probably going to take radiographs of his front feet. Um, and then finish our evaluation and determine what the best ac next action is for him. Very tucked up anus. Which I'm not surprised. I can feel all your bones, buddy. Abby, normal to feel all the bones. I do feel digital pulses. They're not extravagant, but there is feet heat in the feet. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. You're so Here's cute. Some. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, buddy. I think his sheep just looks funny. Okay. Um, did you guys get pain meds? Not grab yet. Something? Okay. I will. But I'll get that while you're... Come on, you got it. Wow. Severe, severe rotation. That's great. Yeah, you say? it is. Yeah, so here's our angle of our hoof wall. And this is where our coffin bone is. And we've got severe lipping and resorption. So chronic, chronic, active, painful founder. I don't even think we need to take the other foot. That I would. horse I, is I so did painful. Both. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah, they were both bad. The oh my goodness, yeah. that one's that worse. one's worse. That's like 40, 45. Five. Yeah. So this, this should be the angle of this bone and that's how severe that rotation is. And you can see all of this osteophyte formation um, at the front. We just got radiographic evidence back on this paint guy and he's very sweet, but unfortunately he has severe rotation and his P3 and his coffin bone and he has lipping and osteophyte formation and he's very painful. So he has had active and chronic um, founder laminitis episodes over and over and over again. So unfortunately, because he's so painful and there's nothing we can do to fix it at this point, 
last act of kindness is probably my recommendation for him, unfortunately. This poor guy is uh, really suffering. Uh, they've taken x-rays of his feet. His feet are in horrible condition. Uh, he does have a crust up here on his neck where basically at one point he was so fat that it just kind of fell over. Um, and so he has, he has just a lot of health problems along with a heart murmur. And we can't control his pain when the coffin bones drop to such a, a, a horrible extent. So there are some foundered horses we get and we're able to treat them, but the most of them that we see are just so horrifically foundered that we can't do anything other than give them last act of kindness. And he's such a beautiful horse, it's, it's really heartbreaking, but I'm so thankful that he ended up wherever, he, whatever situation it took for him to end up with the person that had him that, that utilized our program, because he, he would have gone straight to slaughter. And if you can just imagine this beautiful, sweet horse that loves people having a horrific death in Mexico, it's just heartbreaking. So. Um, We'll be relieving his suffering. It's, I'm just, it's the only gift we can give him. Okay. We have been extremely busy this morning. A lot has happened. We've taken care of like most of the horses that are, I mean, there's still a lot of critical ones, but they're, they showed the most amount of pain. And we've gone through and, and been able to do assessments and everything and relieve those who are, are suffering. I am headed down to the hospital a little bit ahead of the team so we can run CBC chemistries on the horses that we want to do those diagnostics on as well as spin down serum for our horse with the eye ulcer so we can get her treated. This poor mare, um, we pulled out and her feet are just in heartbreaking shape. Um, she's incredibly painful. Her heart rate was 92. Um, so upper end of normal is in the upper 30s for horses. So she's severely painful. Um, she's got mucopurulent nasal discharge. She has exophthalmus, so her right eye is enlarged and being pressed out, which could be from a tumor or a space occupying mass behind that eye um, or glaucoma. But um, I think the primary source of pain for her is her feet, um, and she is so uncomfortable that we are going to give her the last act of kindness without doing diagnostics. Um, there is no way based on how her feet look on the outside that she doesn't have rotation. So we just don't want her to be painful any longer. So we got this draft bear in today. Um, she does have a bad right leg, it looks like. She doesn't seem to be too lame on it, but it definitely looks and smells awful. Um, it looks like they just wrapped it up in a towel and then put elasticon all the way around it to kind of hold it into place. But we could see a lot of uh, stuff hanging out the back where it almost looks like a joint where a joint shouldn't be. So we're gonna uh, take that off and get to the bottom of it. We might need to sedate her too, just because uh, her temperament, but we're gonna try it without sedation first. Hi, but remember I gave you cookies and you ate them. And now we're friends. Looks like she's had pretty bad diarrhea. Sometimes you just get crazy bad cellulitis. If you've got, inf I mean, clearly she has infection. You can smell it. Yeah. yeah. I'm cutting through multiple layers of a towel here. I hate to say it, but this smell reminds me of um, working in the developing world. Oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of a lot of dead smells. How long do you think that's been on there? Oh. It's Died more than more than ten days. So I'm confident that 
A vet likely hasn't seen this because the first thing we would do would be to clip the area. A really severe, proud flesh and obvious infection. But let's take radiographs and see if we don't have a fracture or synovial involvement, there's a chance that we could surgically debride that. I did not see the Galvan group uh, present. Okay. You might. Yeah, she's a tough one. Yeah, I see it right here on this yeah, side, but it's, it's halfway down the tooth. Yep. So it's like right about there. Yep, so like eight, 16, 18. Um, well, it's it. it's coming up from the bottom, so it's starting to disappear already from the oh, top. So mid-20s. So with the size of this horse right here, um, it definitely would have shipped to slaughter. Um, this probably would have yielded quite a bit for somebody at the slaughterhouse, so we're very happy that we were able to intercept this horse before it went there. How much did he weigh? 1,400 pounds. Heavy horse. It sure is. She's a little kicky at flies because she's covered in flies. And if you guys want, I have some squat that I could go grab. <sighs> oh, it smells so bad. Flint fracture, but that's not career ending. Um, and so I want to get all the way down if you guys want to do. So Jason, the goal, the Alara goal, as low as reasonably achievable, is to take as few images as possible. Oh. So you evaluate as you go, because gotcha. if you have a diagnostic answer, uh. like that horse that we had so much rotation, we were making a quality of life yeah. decision. We didn't radiograph the other foot because we didn't need that information. Gotcha. So I would love an image centered directly over this area right here. And then I would love one down on the ground by the foot. This horse has so much pathology going on that if this draft mare is super sweet. She had a very putrid towel taped to her right hind leg, and she has a very significant infection in that right hind leg. But um, she doesn't have evidence that she's septic, that the infection has gone systemic. We did pull blood for a complete blood count, and we're going to take a look at that this afternoon. She needs pretty significant surgical debridement of that wound and exploration of that wound. But she, even though she had a minor fracture in her leg, that fracture is stable. So I think that we have a chance of saving her. Um, we hope that we can, we won't know until we have her in there. So we are gonna move her to our vet hospital for a quarantine period and do a lot more treatments on her tomorrow. We need to get antibiotics and anti-inflammatory pain medication started right away. Um, and then we will follow up with you guys once we have her sedated and know better what's going on underneath that wound. I didn't get bitten. Go for this one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I have no brand. Okay. No brand. Yeah, she's totally a baby. So two and a half, three and a half. Four. Four? Yeah. Yes. Four. Yeah. So this horse just came in. Um, she is acting pretty wild. Um, she's about four years old. She's, she's still pretty young. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give her all the things and turn her out and we're gonna put her in the training program and see what we can do with her. In the shoot looks like a Mustang. She doesn't have a brand. Um, so she is a Mustang. She was bred in captivity probably. She's four years old. She's very wild. Um, and we just did all of the things for her and she, we couldn't get a halter on her. So we're just going to open up and run her back around. 
We're gonna do x-rays on its feet to see if it's foundering or not. Um, it does not appear to be super lame, but regardless, we're gonna grab some x-rays and try to figure out just by the way the feet look. Yeah. Forty, I would say that's more yeah, than 40, 40 degrees of rotation. Yeah. yeah, that's almost pushing 50. So this is our B24103 gelding, bay gelding. Um, he, we saw from the evidence of the way his feet were growing that there might be something going on. So we took some radiographs, well, a radiograph of his left front, and he had some severe rotation of that P3, that coffin bone, which um, told us that he's had chronic laminitic episodes or founders multiple founder episodes. Um, so because of the degree of rotation and that it's chronic and there's nothing really we can do for him, that uh, last act of kindness is unfortunately what's recommended for him. He's super cute. Um, he has a mass on his right eye that's actually, you can't tell from the outside, but it's extending into the eye and the characteristics look like it's probably malignant. So um, it's probably some type of a carcinoma. Um, he's at a body condition score of one and he's got some pretty significant back pain, um, but he also has indications of cresituism, which um, can be a sign of Cushing's disease, pars, pituitary, and remediate dysplasia. Did I say it right, Dr. Gina? Yes. Um, so Cushing's disease causes a lot of metabolic problems, but it can make them not shut out. It can make it very difficult for them to gain weight. Um, it, and it's not curable. It's something that we can sometimes manage, but this horse looks like he's um, pretty advanced with that. And he's also got um, swollen back legs. He's got some swelling in his cheek and he's got a lot of scarring on his legs. So um, overall this poor boy, he really needs a dramatic surgery to remove the right eye, but in his condition with all of his other issues going on, he's not a good candidate for anesthesia. Um, so I think probably for him, the kindest thing is the last act of kindness. You can't chew them. Do you have no teeth? No. Okay, all right. So this poor boy has a lot of problems. Um, he has a lot of edema on his head. So you can see he's got swelling on both sides of his head. And we can check to see if there's increased pressure behind eyes by doing something called retropulsion. So I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna cause him discomfort. But if you gently push on the eyes, they should recess a little bit and his aren't able to recess. So that indicates that he has some kind of a space occupying mass um, inside his head. He's probably experiencing a lot of pain from that, kind of akin to a really severe headache. Um, he has mucopurulent nasal discharge and some crackles in both of his lungs. He's missing some teeth, and then he also has severe founder in all four of his feet, so he's got really badly slippered feet. Um, I estimated him to be about 26 years old, and he's very sweet, but you can tell that um, he's really painful. Um, he also either. has evidence of hirsutism, which is a sign of Cushing's disease. Um, so that's a metabolic disorder. The Cushing's disease is probably why he's had such severe founder in all four of his feet. Um, and it looks like it's been going on for a really long time, like probably years. Oh, he saw about it and actually that might be something to me. Um, this very good boy is a three and a half year old Mustang gelding. Um, he doesn't look like he's had a ton of handling, but he's being a very good boy and it doesn't look like he has any obvious health concerns. So we're gonna do all of his intake. This sweet boy is about 28 years old. He's missing most of his upper incisors are worn to the gum, but he still has enough teeth in the backs of his mouth that I would like to try to do a dental float on him to see if we can improve his body condition score. He's got a pretty significant puncture wound on his face, on the left side of his face, that's going into his sinus cavity. So we're going to clip and clean that area and suture it closed. Um, he doesn't have a heart murmur. His lungs sound okay. Um, and I'm hopeful that if we can get those things fixed and get him healthy enough that um, we might get him to adoption. 
He also has a mass in his right eye. One of the differentials is an ocular melanoma, but it could be a benign mass. So I'm not an ophthalmologist. I'm gonna to need to take a much closer look at that and see if we can get a, a definitive diagnosis of that eye. If it is melanoma, the course of action would be to enucleate the eye, which he's not healthy enough right now to undergo a really intense surgery. So we're gonna take it a day at a time with this guy. We're gonna get his face fixed and get his teeth fixed and see if we can get him to gain weight. Almost all the horses are itchy today and almost all the horses are covered in a ton of lice today. So um, we're all feeling very itchy, but the nice thing is that horse lice will not live on humans for long, but they will crawl around on us and make us feel very itchy for a bit, but they won't start um, just inhabiting us like they do the horses. So it just, this is kind of an itchy licey day too, on top of everything, huh? Yeah. So ivermectin will actually kill the lice. Um, so it goes through their system and then um, basically their body will become toxic to lice and ticks and things. So ivermectin will help with all of that. It's just um, takes a little bit for it to kick in. Yeah, I don't think she's quite four. Yeah, well, I mean, these. this is as short as it is wide, so that would be a baby tooth, right? Yeah, so is this two and a half? I would think so. Okay, so we're between two and a half and three. Okay. I would agree I with that. I call her three, but should we call her two, two and a half instead? Yeah. Based on her mouth, she could yeah. be right at three. Okay. Yeah. Um, this little mare doesn't seem to have had a lot of handling, but she's responding really well. Um, she is about two and a half years old. Dr. Gina and I both looked at her teeth and she has some utter development. So obviously she's not skeletally mature and she shouldn't have been bred, but there is a chance that she is already um, bred. So we're gonna um, sedate her soon and do a rectal exam and check and see if maybe she is pregnant. For her sake, I hope she's not, uh, but we wanna know if she is so we can take better care of her. But other than that, she's got some pretty visible scars on her body, but she looks to be physically healthy. Yep, that is definitely a lice. So yes, let's please use Ivermectin instead of Quest. Uh, and she is really loaded with them, holy moly. So this sweet three-year-old mare is getting all of her intake. Um, as far as we can tell, she's in great health. So we are super excited um, for her to get done with her quarantine so we can adopt her and find her home. Very okay. Good girl. Can I get a syringe, please? I think Dr. Gene's working on it. So this donkey is very young. Well, we're thinking that he is a baby mammoth jack donkey. Um, and those donkeys can get pretty big. Uh, if you see a lot of the big mules, it's usually what they're bred with and also a Belgian draft or some sort of draft horse. So he is a very big donkey. He's a baby baby. He's, in my opinion, still got all of his baby teeth. Come look at these teeth. Dr. Lydia, teeth. Oh, they're all baby teeth. That's what I thought. Like two? Yeah. No, younger than two. Under 12 months. Yeah. He's huge. He's very cute. Should we just say like, well, she was a mammoth too. Nine months. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's so he has kind of a big baby still. Look, he just made a grumpy face when Corey's dead. I'm so sorry. So it's all necessary. Um, we have a baby donkey who appears to be very healthy, so we're doing all of his intake. He's so cute. And he's gonna be gigantic. <laughs> I have something I that might be a scar. 
Is he at his cognitive form? Yes. I think I've got a scrotum with a scar right here. That'd be good. I mean, I can pull it out and it's an empty bag. jump out. Um, I feel like Galvanus Roof is not colored, but it looks to be at the very bottom of the tooth. So I already passed like 30, 25 to 30. I would say past 20, maybe 22. This lovely gray mare who is very agitated and upset, which I can't blame her, who knows what she's been through before coming here. Um, upon listening to her when she was in here, she has a grade four out of six heart murmur which is like, it's really funny to listen to, but um, unfortunate for her. So because of the risk of a traumatic cardiac event, we are recommending for her the last act of kindness, which is unfortunate because she's really cute. I mean, this guy is, look at him. like 18 one or two Be this very handsome boy um is very old but um he looks to be in pretty decent shape he wasn't eating out there and i suspect that he's got some major dental pathology so we're putting him top of the list for a dental he's got some elevated lung sounds on the right and some mucopurulent nasal discharge just from the right nostril so we're gonna run a CBC on him. He's probably gonna need some antibiotics. Um, and based on the smell in his mouth, he's definitely gonna need some dental assessment. Um, he is quite aged, so I don't think he has a ton of time left, but he's a very good boy and I would love to get him a little bit more time in a forever home if we can get him healthy and gaining weight here. Well, if he needs more diagnostics, put him in Q1. Look how cute this baby we got to fix your leg, okay? you got to let us catch you. Oh, we ate the cookie. <laughs> oh, there's a plate on the left. Big, yes. Hopefully it doesn't have communicate have with the I hawk. Get, so. He's a big baby, but he's a baby. Look at those baby teeth. Oh, baby teeth. Tiny little baby teeth. Okay. So cute. That's good. Thank you. So cute. So this adorable little nugget is going to be moved down to the vet barn so we can do some more um, procedures on him tomorrow. We're going to take some radiographs of his bilateral hocks because um, you can see he has a wound back there um, and keep a close eye on him because he's about a little baby about six months old. But he's a good boy. And we're going to run some blood work on him. We're going to take care of him and get him some groceries and a friend. So, everybody loves the babies. He's a good boy. Somebody cut her tail, too. Yeah. I wonder if she had dreadlocks in it or if it was the same thing. That shows up at 7 and 11. Galvani's group, like, just, just started? Barely? Yeah, let's say 11. Okay. Um, What's that this, baby's number? This horse, let's, let's put him down for dental assessment. Sure. All right, so this sweet boy, uh, we just got done doing his just neural intake exam and he needs a dental assessment, um, but we're passing him to get all the things. He's 11 years old and super sweet. 
He's just a little shy. But other than that, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Let's see the other side over here. Yeah, I would say, yep, 14, 15-ish. Yep, good job. Hi, you're so cute. Um, this little gelding is about 14 years old. Um, he doesn't look to have any major medical concerns at first glance. So we are gonna go ahead and do all the things. He had a halter on when he came in. Looks like he's had some decent farrier care. So it's exciting. He looks healthy and we're gonna um, go ahead and get his intake taken care of. Good boy. Good job. Thank you. You're super cute. You're all right. I know he's being very wild. I know you're a good boy. What a good boy. When you've done it for a long time, it's, it's not so complicated. Yeah, good boy. When I worked at a vet office, they loved me because I could do a lot of things that they would really struggle at. They're like, Connie, please come give this horse this. Uh, he does like treats. Oh, he already took it. Wonderful. So we have another one. One more. Yep. It's perfectly well trained. I don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> he was he was a good boy. Um, this cute little mare has a Roman nose and is very sweet. Um, she needs a dental. She also needs a surgical procedure for her left eye because she's blind in it. Um, but thankfully it's not painful right now. Um, and otherwise she looks to be pretty sound and in pretty good shape. Her body condition score is very low. So we're gonna put her on a refeeding program and we're gonna try to address her teeth this week sooner than later so we can get some weight on her. But she's very, very sweet. Um, she's very small, but she seems very gentle and I think she would make a great kid's pony. Her left eye, looks like it has ruptured in the past and it is small. So um, an eye that doesn't have signs of cancer or infection doesn't always have to come out, but I don't like to leave them open because they're prone to ir chronic irritation and flies and stuff get in there. So I usually just kind of gently resect those eyelids, but I leave the glands intact um, so the eye can still lacrimate normally. And then I leave a little area open at the medial canthus. So it helps owners with maintenance of the eye so they don't have to kind of keep that area cleaned out and free of flies and it won't make any difference to her. She can't see out of that eye anyway. Be free. You a little nervous? I know. It's okay to be nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got, we got pictures on her. We're gonna put her through the shoot for everything else. I think she's got a little bit of vision. We can test real quick if you'd like. Might not be too good for pulling blood and needles. Yeah. 
Maybe a little bit on the right. Oh wait, I don't know if I'm touching her eyebrows or what. Yeah. Don't hurt yourself. Good girl. Good girl. She's just reactive to the initial poke. Yeah. And it's like she can feel it moving in there and then she's yeah. like, eh. This little girl is only two and a half years old based on her dental exam. Um, she's partially visual on both sides. Her pupils are a little cloudy or her lenses are a little cloudy. Um, so we're going to do a better assessment of that tomorrow. And other than that, so far we haven't found anything to keep her from getting all the things. So this little dude in here that you can't really see too well, um, he's a young guy. He's between six months old and about a year. Um, his teeth say he's about six months old, but the rest of his body says he's older. So, um, but he's just a little unhandled and a little pushy without any manners. So he's in the squeeze chute, but he got all the things and we're gonna let Corey do his evaluation on him when he's calmed down a little bit. Um, but other than that, he looks really good. So we are on to the last horse. We were extremely productive today and extremely efficient. We were able to look at each individual horse and determine what its best options were. Um, the vets can explain a little bit of what they saw. We did see a lot of critical stuff today, but all in all, it was a pretty successful day. It's been a very busy day. Out of the 38 horses we were able to intercept from going to auction, there were 16 horses that did require the last act of kindness and the others we have some on a, a concern list. Um, we have some that we think are like perfectly fine, we hope. Uh, I'm gonna be leaving the team up here um, because I was the euthanasia technician today on duty. I have a lot of paperwork I have to do. So um, I'm gonna leave everyone here to finish up, but they are on the last horse, so I'm really excited. I'm sure Dr. Gina will give you a report um, from her side of things. Uh, Dr. Lydia has gone home, uh, so we're just wrapping up here, but it's been amazing that we were able to intercept so many horses out of the slaughter pipeline today. And I would like to thank each and every one of our donors. And remember, next month we're being asked to take a semi-truck of horses to intercept them from going to slaughter. So we need your support. Please help us rescue, shelter, and protect the helpless by making a donation. Two and a half. Okay. Two and a half? Yeah. You see? You see? Hey, Dr. Gina. I can help. Cool. <laughs> I got something right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we just finished up with the last filly of the day. She's really nervous, but unhandled little baby. She's about two and a half years old. She got all the things, and we're about to kick her out and let her have her time to decompress. All right, so we are finishing up today on our buyout program and intake. We did 38 horses today, which is amazing. We had some really sad heart murmurs and a really cool arrhythmia and some other really neat things um, and some horses that we're going to really give chances to and work with. And a few are going to the vet barn. So, but other than that, we're just about to go back down to the vet barn and close up for the day.